Hi guys, PJ here. Today we are working on a 2015 Volvo S60. Now we're going to be fitting a dashboard camera into the vehicle and hardwiring it to the fuse box so that the camera itself goes on and off with the vehicle ignition. The wires will all be nicely hidden away so that you can't see any of that and we're looking for a factory fitted finish. Now if you're going to fit your own camera in a vehicle you're going to ideally need a fitting kit. Now as you can see this fitting kit is made by Next Base and it comes with everything necessary to do the installation whereby it replaces the original power cable that comes with your camera so you won't need the one that comes with your camera this comes with a power cable it's got a usb mini usb plug on the end there and on the end of the wire is a plus and a minus it also comes with something called a fuse spur now you normally get a couple of different size fuse spurs you get mini blade ones and the larger or more old-fashioned if you like or commercial spec fuses and what this basically does is double up one of the fuse box sockets so it will run the original circuit and the camera so it's a case of pulling the fuse popping this in and doubling the socket however bear in mind you need to use an accessory fuse so we'll be showing you all that you need to use one that is not a critical system such as airbags abs uh, ecu that type of thing you're going to need one that goes on and off with the ignition and is an accessory okay so that's your fitting kit out of the way the camera itself, I mean this particular one we're fitting in X-Base as you can see, but most brands are the same. A lot of the good cameras will come with two different mounts. Okay, you've got your sucker mount, which is literally a window screen sucker, very simple, sticks on. And a 3M sticky mount. Now if your window screen is just glass where you're going to mount your camera, no problem, use the sucker. If however it has a black textured area next to the mirror, and that's where you're going to put your camera, you're going to end up using the sticky mount because... The sucker will not stick to the black textured area okay so depending on your window screen is depending which which mount you use if you've only got this mount the sucker mount in your camera kit then obviously you can't stick it on the black area near the mirror you're gonna have to stick it a little bit further away and try and angle it down to cover the front of your bonnet so without further ado let's get on to the actual fitting of this thing and at this point i have to mention I'm in no way held responsible or liable for any damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself by following this video guide. Right, so, first things first, we have to prepare the power cable that comes with the fitting kit. And here's the power cable. Now, most of them come with a ferrous filter, like this one, it's an interference filter. If it's not already on the power cable, uh, it's got some little hinges there, and on the other side, two little clips. So basically, pop the clips open, Fold it open and wrap the wire through, round the outside of it and out again and then squeeze it shut. That's to stop interference on DAB radio and that type of thing or at least try and help with it. So if you've got one of them in the pack and it's not on your cable already, pop it open, thread round and over and just basically bring it out like you can see. Nice and easy job to do. Okay. Now what I personally do is hold the cable up to the top of the window screen and measure it so that you roughly know where it's going to sort of come to get yourself some cable ties wrap them around it yeah periodically and then cover them in electrical tape or similar now you don't have to do this but the reason i do it is because if you're driving along and you hit a big pothole 10 to 1 the cable will fall out from up under the headline and it'll be dangling in front of the window screen this bulks the cable out a little bit more just gives it that firm grip so it's not going to go anywhere i wrap them in electrical tape because as some of you may know when you've got cable ties it's normally got a sharp edge now your headlining here is a soft fabric material with like a cardboard fibre base. Obviously over time, in theory, the, the hard plastic of the cable tie edge could rub and make a mess of it. You don't want that, so I'll just cover it in tape. Like I say, you don't have to do it, it's just a tip. I've been doing these years, so it's something I do from now on. Now, the actual headline itself is quite delicate, so do not go at it like a bull in a gate. Okay, you could ideally do with something like this, if I just come down. This is a plastic leverage tool. This one's made by Bojo. They're available off eBay and Amazon, that type of place. And all it is, is for levering plastic surfaces in cars or, you know, soft things. You do not want to use a screwdriver. You will certainly damage the trim on the vehicle. You do not want to do that. So get yourself something like this, something made of plastic, and just basically tuck it above the headlining. So you pop it in, like so, pull down, look, you've got a bit of flex there, you see, yeah? Like I say, don't get mad at it. There we go. So you've got a gap. And then all we're going to do is get our cable and tuck it up underneath the headlining. 
like so. So there's the end of the cable. We've tucked it snugly up all the way along until we get to the corner here. Get your plastic leverage tool under the edge. Just lift this very slightly. You don't have to go mad at this area. Obviously there is airbags underneath this, so be you know a little bit careful. And we're going to tuck the power cable literally under the edge here, right under the edge. So we're not going over the airbag or anything like that, because I know I do get a few people you know pop in the comments the questions about all oh, my airbag and all the rest of it well right at the top here you're not going down here over your airbag and believe me if you've ever seen an airbag come out which i have quite a few times you know a little cable would not stop it from happening or cause any harm so we can pop that down there okay like so and tuck it in you're gonna to have to get your plastic leverage tool and just snug it down slightly and then we're going to follow on down the edge here and there we go it's just tucked literally under the edge there's no visible sign of any cable that's exactly how you want it you can now go ahead and grab your rubber seal just pull it off put it all the way down here like so go all the way down like so because we're going to be taking this end plate off soon and then tuck your cable excuse me get a decent camera view there for you put your cable in all the way down so it's literally snugged in pop the cable under and then your rubber trim back over just to keep it in place but only go down as far as here okay next up we're going to be needing that plastic leverage tool again because we're going to be popping off this end plate and this end plate pops off by popping something under it and levering there's clips around it and they will pop and it will fall off don't pull at it or forget and shut your passenger door because the airbag connector will still be connected do not disconnect the airbag connector because if you put the ignition on you'll throw a fault code up and you'll have a warning light on your dashboard but you'll then have to get switched off somewhere so we're going to pop this off and leave it dangling okay so club box door open leverage trim under some of these are tighter than others it depends if they've been off before and then you can just pull it away there we go it's on little spring clips lock, nice and easy. And this is your airbag uh, on and off switch connector. So like I say, leave that on, do not unplug, okay? This piece of trim here, this pops off. So you're just gonna pop it off so we can put the cable behind it. But to pop this piece off, we have to come all the way down here to the sill trim and lever this off. This thing's on little clips. Sometimes you can get your fingers under it and clip it off. Sometimes it has to have a bit of a bit of a wiggling pop it off so you will notice when you get this off it's on a slide hook at the end so don't pull straight up so you've got three clips there we go they just shove fit pop that out of the way and then you've got access to the end of this now it's on clip here and also down here so once again you have to pull up so you've got a push fit clip there on a pop up like so car depending on left or right and drive possibly will have the bonnet release so you're going to need a tx20 driver to remove that let's take that out like so off that comes it's on a spline you can't get it wrong when you put it back and then you've got some movement here look you can actually shift the plastic there's another peg here holding it in in the middle so again you're going to want your plastic leverage device to pop it like so and then you're finally able to get behind it we're going to use one of these bolts as an earthing point you see so we do want access to those so i'll just remove the trim need both hands for this one so we're taking the 13 millimeter bolt out so that we can put an earthing point behind it okay and there we go with the bolt out we've got our earthing cable threaded through the bolt and then a washer on the end of it so that it doesn't spin around it needs to sit nicely okay put that bolt back in again and that'll be your earth completed and there's the earth cable attached to the bolt nice good earth that one nice strong earth and we can feed the power cable now down below and under to where your fuse box is which is right there it's only got this plastic cover on it like so you just pop it off and uh, we're going to be looking for an accessory fuse in there for the power cable now for the fuse side of things this will be your, your fuse spur that we're using and as you can see it's basically a doubler socket 
you remove the fuse, this shoves in, and then you've got one fuse that comes with it that runs the camera, it's normally a 2 or a 3 amp, and then the fuse you've pulled out goes in the spare socket here. This simply plugs onto the end of your power cable that uh, goes to the camera itself. Now the fuses on some cars are quite recessed, I always use some long nose pliers just to pull them out, but uh, you get a little tool with the car, a little plastic thing that can be used, so it's up to you really. To test the fuse circuit you're going to either need a multimeter like I have here or you're going to need one of those little screwdrivers with a light in the end of it. So a test probe whereby you touch the end of it and it lights up if it's live. Now with the ignition off we're going to start testing our accessory position fuses. Refer to your user guide to figure out which are accessory fuses and not uh, you know, important fuses such as like say ABS and stuff. Every car can differ depending on year and spec, so you are going to have to test these fuses. Don't just use the same one as I use and take it for granted, okay? Yes, a lot of them are the same because they're mass produced, but there is variations. It's always best to check. Now, what we're going to do to check, if you're using a multimeter, you should actually know how to do this, otherwise there's no point in you owning a multimeter. If you're using a test probe, it's similar. Connect your black one to an earthing point. You know, something like that, I'll get it held on there. I'm going to need two hands to do this, guys, so hence I'm showing you a preview. So tap that onto an earth point, and then you get your test probe. And what we need it to do is stay at roughly zero when we touch the little silver caps on the end of the fuse, yeah? Like so. So they've all got little shiny bits on the end of them. And we're going to be touching those with the ignition off to make sure it reads zero, or to make sure your test probe screwdriver does not light up. When we found one that doesn't light up or doesn't read a voltage, we're then going to put the ignition on and test it again. If it lights up or reads a voltage, you have found an ignition switched fuse. So on this particular model, we've ascertained that the 5 amp fuse there, which is 1, 2, 3 down, there's one missing at the top. So the 5 amp fuse there is ignition switched accessory fuse and that is the one we will be using for this installation. We can now go ahead and remove that fuse. Just get our trusty long nose pliers here and pull the fuse out. It is dead now, the ignition is off. You must do this with the ignition off. There we go, pull that one out. Shove it in your fuse spur so that you've got it in there next to the one that runs the camera and then plug this in where the fuse came from. Sorry about the camera angles here guys, it's uh, really awkward as you can imagine doing this one-handed and trying to hold a camera. There we go, shove that in like so and then obviously plug your power cable onto the end of it. The last thing really to do after you've given your camera a quick test to make sure it powers on is just tidy all your cabling up. So what we're going to do is group it all up into bunches and stash it out the way neatly. On these Volvos there's a big area behind the carpet here that's already got a load of cabling behind it that you can stash it behind. So last of all, before you uh, finish off, don't forget to put your memory card in your camera. Now if you've gone and bought a 4K camera, 4K resolution, obviously you're going to need a faster memory card than this one in the picture here. This is only good for up to 1440p. Consult your retailer for that, wherever you bought the camera from, they should advise you for the correct memory card for the correct camera. Okay, and we've reassembled all the trim, it literally just clicks back into place, very straightforward. Don't forget your TX20 screw to put back there. And that's it, that is how you fit a camera in a Volvo S60. If you've got any questions at all, please pop them in the comments below. I really hope this was some use to you, and goodbye for now.